There's fish right there. Nice. It's amazing how so many people depend on their sonar to detect these walleye, but really bottom dwelling walleye in the Columbia, if you're only fishing marks, you're really missing out. You really need to understand the habitat and the current they occur in because my fish finder was just completely blank there. And I think that's a common mistake that a lot of Columbia River walleye anglers make is that they only fish marks when in reality, you really should be fishing seams, structure, and the bottom habitat they like to hang out in. Really nice eater fish here. Take that. Beautiful. All right, let's get this guy bled and in the cooler. Now, I think there's very few fisheries that frustrate people more than walleye. Um, and a big part of it is because of how difficult it is to locate these fish and get them to bite. They're very sensitive to presentation and they're very localized. Like when you hear the old adage that, you know, 1% of the river holds 90% of the fish. That is definitely true for walleye. There are many areas where they are not, but where they are, there are often many of them. Let's get this guy in the cooler. First fish of the day. There we go. There's fish. Nice. A big part of the Columbia River walleye fishing skill set that you need is boat control and just matching the drift is probably the most challenging things. Now, today it's easy because there's no wind, but being able to control your boat and the current and the wind and match the natural drift of your baits is gonna be critical to getting walleye in the net. It's challenging even for me in a kayak, um, but it's even more challenging in a boat because they have a bigger wind profile. And it seems that bow-mounted trolling motors really help in that situation. There's a nice walleye. So I definitely recommend looking into bow-mounted trolling motors if that's if uh, Columbia River walleye are high on your hit list. They are an invaluable tool in helping to match the drift. This guy's wasn't gonna lose him. There we go. Shredding my worm now. That's a nice fish right there. Good eater. There we go, which fish. Nice. Now one of the reasons I'm able to detect these bites at such extreme depths is because I am using a very fast action medium to medium light power rod. And I'm only using eight pound braid as my main line. This gives me more sensitivity and lets me fill those bites. Additionally, I use really heavy jigs, upwards of an ounce. These are one ounce jigs I'm using today, but it's pretty rare on the Columbia I'm gonna be using anything less than half an ounce. And I think a lot of guys come out here with undersized gear and they get a lot of line paid out behind them as they're trying to do the drift. 
you get the more line you have out rather than having that straight vertical presentation the harder it's going to be to detect the bite from these fish so i strongly advise using braid because it's going to transfer that bite uh, information up the line to you better and also to use a thinner braid it's going to have less blowback it's going to be more sensitive and then that pairs back in with that boat control but having that vertical presentation matching that drift and having the minimum amount of line down to the bottom it's going to help you detect that bite i mean it is just a tap most of the time they don't come up and slam it it's just a tap and you need to set the hook now my favorite rods are going to be in the six and a half to seven and a half foot range looking for that graphite rod you do not want to be using glass or composites here you want that maximum amount of sensitivity fast action on the tip fast action means that that rod tip wants to return back to its shape really quickly and that means it's going to transmit the signal that bite so much better now fenwick produces a bunch of really nice walleye jigging and blade baiting rods but any drop shotting rod in the medium to medium light rod for bass uh, works really well in this scenario and my favorite budget rod is this seven foot medium action berkeley lightning rod uh, it's very sensitive it's very light it's only like 50 bucks it has dual locking reel seat and it has this little exposed area on the blank so my thumb is right there on that blank all the time and so i can feel those bites because there's no cork between me and the broad blank so i'm changing it up that's the key to this walleye fishery is it can just be a matter of 10 20 feet or 100 yards or a mile it just kind of depends on uh, how these fish are feeding Oop, there's fish on the drop look at that came out here to like 60 feet and got one <laughs> literally just dropped it and got him that's great Nice fish too. Look at that. Way out here, away from where I was. Can't be afraid to move. We came off the jig too. Just like I got him in the net. That's crazy. I love it when the fish make it look like I know what I'm talking about. Here you go, another beautiful walleye. Awesome. I see that time and time again is these guys will come out they'll do a single drift maybe just using jigs and they don't get a bite and they move on and for me i think it's important to systematically work an area um because these fish are going to move up shallower depending on the current if it's high current they'll move up shallower if it's low current they're gonna move out deeper and the current started to drop off and i've been fishing in 40 50 foot of water all day so i bumped out to 60 and literally got a fish on the drop. Uh, I am way down there at 80 feet. i work my way up to 60 on this slope. What's amazing, there's fish right there, 72 feet. <laughs> What's amazing is the uh, being able to detect what kind of bottom substrate there is down there. Just using line in my jig so that ultra thin line i can feel the bottom i can feel sand mud cobble a lot of head shaking nice fish there we go got him nice and that's that's a huge advantage being able to tell what type of habitat you're fishing in there's another reason to go with a thin braid showing some barrel trauma coming up from those depths that is my one thing i don't like about fishing at those depths is if i catch a big fish survivability is low unless i send it back down using a, a weight and that is something i've actually started doing is i've started carrying my uh, rockfish descending device with me when i'm walleye fishing so if i do catch a big female i can send her back down my best to conserve the fishery because a lot of these columbia river walleye will hang out very deep unlike their midwestern and great lakes relatives 
There it is. Nice. You know, I worked in the tackle shop nearby here. People used to ask me where to catch Columbia River walleye. They'd ask me what depth, and I said, oh, they could be anywhere from 20 to 100 feet. I think they thought I was just, you know, blowing smoke up their ass, but it's really the truth. There's no way to really know where they're going to be, uh, depending on the day and the conditions. I mean, I started at 30, 40 feet today, caught one, and now I'm out in 90 feet of water catching them. So you just never know. There's fish. Got them. Wow, that was 85 feet. Very nice walleye. Off the hook, too. You gotta keep that pressure on them coming up from those depths. They can spit it easy. Another fine eater size. Pretty fish. There's a whole lot of monkey see, monkey do out here. I don't know why guide boats wanna make their boats obvious because everybody just flocks around you because they think you know what you're doing. I mean, one of the great advantages of being a kayak angler is that not as many people take you seriously. And as a result, you get less boats dropping right in on top of you, which might be true in life. I have no idea what I'm doing, but when it comes to fishing, I think I'm doing okay. Oh, you bastard. Missed it. There he is. Got him. Nice. He kept following along and tagging it. Just a matter of time getting him to commit to it. Feels very walleye-ish. There it is. That's number eight for the day and my limit. Probably the smallest one of the day too, but still a good eater. 97 feet on that one. Ugh. A little guy. All right, so that's my eight walleye for the day. It was a great day. Had to apply all of those skills that I've acquired over the years on walleye fishing on the Columbia, and hopefully helped you learn some of the subtle nuances that it takes to successfully go out and target these fish. They can be very challenging. Like I said, you no know telling how deep they're gonna be, and the bite is very finicky and light. You need the right gear, right boat control to make it happen. It's a really great fishery. I encourage everybody to participate. It's a really fun one, but I do always ask, let those big girls go, anything over 20 inches, let them swim. Let's keep this fishery around since we've pretty much squandered every other decent fishery in the Pacific Northwest. If you have any questions, just let me know. I will put links to everything I use in this video in the description. Be sure to like and subscribe. Loved that underwater video, right? It's awesome. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye guys.